Hello everyone, praise the Lord, and welcome to our Bible study that we try to do weekly to share with you some seeds that we pray that you will plant not only in your families, but with friends and others that you would like to get God's word out to. You know, we all know folks in our lives who are just wonderful people, but they're living a very worldly type life. We would like to get a message to them. But we may not know how to do a Bible study. We may not know that we have the skill or can remember the scriptures to use or whatever, but you know what? Take this Bible study that you're having today and some of the previous ones, share them, do a watch party, spread it, not from a, a form of vanity, but just sheer information. We have words that we've taken directly from the Bible that we wanna share with you. And we ask you to do the same with others that you would like to get that message to. So for the past weeks, our Bible teacher, Elder Milton Andrew, has been dealing with laying a solid foundation on which we know that no man can bring anything other than that. Our foundation is Jesus Christ. And we can take that and grow on it and build on it. And as he has suggested, please, we want everyone to be saved. We would like for you to now listen as he brings you some new information to build on what he's already given you and ask the question, do you know what time it is? We are living in perilous times. Many things are happening, but what does God say about it? I'm going to move out of the way and let our teacher come and get you started. God bless you all. Praise the Lord, everyone. <clears throat> This girl, she knows she know how to set it up. Bless you, Carlisa Whitehead, my sister who's been there from the beginning. We praise God for you, and we pray that God will continue to bless you to do all that he've called you to do. We love you and your daughter. Praise the Lord, everyone, for those who are on now, for those who are coming, for those who shall play it on replay. We come in the name of the Lord. As my wife said, these are perilous times and we must get ourselves ready for the time is coming that Christ is gonna require us to be ready. Not getting ready, but to be ready to go back with him. So let's invite him in with prayer and let's begin with our new subject for this week. Precious Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, oh, we love you, oh, we adore you. We praise you, Lord, and we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, because we were once in darkness and you came with your grace, Lord, that grace and mercy that snatched us out of darkness and brought us into your marvelous light. For that, Lord, we are thankful. For that, Lord, we can face today and tomorrow without fear because we know that we are in you and you are in us, our hope of glory. So today, Lord, we come against every force that comes against your word and the people, their ear gates, their heart gates. Let them receive the word, Lord, that you have ordained for them to have for this day before the foundation of the world. We bless you now, give your name the praise, receive the glory, in Jesus' name we pray. Precious uh, people of God, we want to ask you to turn to Ecclesiastes, the third chapter, and we're going to read verses 1 and 2. Ecclesiastes, the third chapter, verses 1 and 2. It reads such and such. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. I wanna take from Ecclesiastes, the third chapter, verse 2a, this statement, a time to be born and a time to die. And I want to use as a controlling thought today in a question, do you know what time it is? When we look at what we have control over, we quickly understand that we don't have control over 
when we are born or when we die. But God has given us the strength and the power to determine what happens between the time we are born and the time that we die. When we go to funerals, we see in the eulogy that they have what we call a sunrise and a sunset. The time a person is born and the time that he dies. But the interesting part of that uh, analogy is that there's a dash between the sunset and the sunrise. And that dash usually denotes what a person did with his life. What accomplishments did he achieve? Did he, uh, was he a church man? Did he have children? Who is he leaving behind after his demise? That dash is also the time that he or she has to determine where he or she is going to spend eternal life. You see, the fool lives his or her life without even considering eternal life during the dash, during a period of time that God has given us upon this earth. And now that I'm in the winter of my season, when I look back, I still remember being able to shoot basketball, to dunk, to run up and down the court, to do miles of, of jogging. I still remember that, but it's so brief that from 71 back to those days seemed like it passed overnight. But that's what the Bible say that life is. It's only a short period of time that we have to make some eternal decisions in. So my brothers and sisters, before we continue to walk like we're walking, we have to first stop and determine what time it is. You know, when you look at your destiny, your destiny is only in two places. Place one is heaven. Heaven is a prepared place for a prepared people. In other words, people who have doing their dash prepared for heaven are the people that are going to die and go to heaven. You don't get to heaven by a mistake or by your mama's religion or by the people who love you. I, I know some people, my brothers and sisters, who live like the devil. And then when you went to the funeral, they were talking about somebody you didn't even know. This person they were talking about was an angel from heaven. But that's the pastor, that's the loved ones desiring to place us in that place called heaven. You cannot get to heaven unless you prepare to go there. It's not by volition, it's not by will, but it's by doing what God has ordained and God has laid down here for us to do. So faith and obedience get you to this place called heaven. The other place that you would wind in, uh, could, could wind up in is a place called hell. Hell is also a prepared place for unprepared people. People who lived their dash between the sunrise and sunset and did not prepare for heaven ends up in a place called hell. And while you have breath and while you have ears to hear, why would you end up in a place called hell when you can end up in this place called heaven that meets every utopia that you and I desire, even on this earth, to reach? So the world is, most of the population of the world is under spiritual blindness. Anybody that chooses hell over heaven has to be blind crazy or something, but we're making these conscious or unconscious choices each and every day. Spiritual blindness is simply not being able to hear the voice of God, nor see the hand of God that is speaking and moving to prepare us for this place called heaven. It's spiritual blindness and most of the world it's headed that way. When we look at this pandemic that have come upon this earth, 
This pandemic, my brothers and sisters, is a love token from God. For this is what God sees. And because we are such a small portion of what happens in this entire world, this is what the all-seeing God sees. He see that times have moved back to the days of Lot. And when the days of Lot was here, there was Sodom and Gomorrah. Homosexuality was all over the place. And God had to send his angels to destroy that place with fire. When God looks at this world, particularly the United States of America, because we have more and he expect more. When he looks at us, he sees the days of Noah. In other words, they were so sinful that God repented. God repented. He was sorry that he made man and he saved Noah, his wife, his three sons and their wife, and he destroyed the whole world. This pandemic is God saying to us, the world, listen, listen to this. He put the whole world on shutdown. Everybody had to stay inside. He closed the schools and churches. He closed them down. Death is all around us. Fear has overcome us. This ain't no natural thing. This is a God thing. And God said in his word, if some of you don't believe that God would move that way, he said, look, if I would shut up heaven and there'd be no rain, if I was sitting the locusts, the locusts are in Africa eating up everything, y'all, locusts over four inches long. If I was sitting the locusts to devour the land, if I was sitting pestilence, that's what we have now, this uh, coronavirus. If I was sitting pestilence among my people, he said, if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and begin to seek my face and turn from their wickedness, he said, then would I hear from heaven and forgive their sins and heal the land. But we got a bunch of churches, you all, who have power Profess to have, uh, confess to have uh, power, but they don't possess anything because they have not followed the will and the word of God. So here is God sending a pandemic upon this earth, not to destroy us, but to get us to repent and turn from what we are walking in. He sees that we are walking into a pit, the pit of hell. And if he doesn't do something, if he doesn't say something, we will walk into the pit of hell and spend all eternity there. But God has sent this. He sent this because he's calling us back to repentance. He's calling us back to his way of governance, his way of doing what he have designed men to do upon this earth. You see, this is the worst pandemic. The real pandemic is that the men and women, particularly in the church, don't hear the voice of God and don't see the hand of God and they are continuing their ways. We're just waiting for this to pass over so we can continue our normal. God is saying your normal is why we're here right now. God is saying that your normal isn't what is pleasing unto him. So the worst pandemic is the people of God and the people of this world not hearing that it's God that's speaking you all. Nobody shuts the whole world down. Never has this happened before. But the same thing that happened to the children of Israel is happening to the church of our Lord Jesus Christ. In the book of Jeremiah, you find that God sent Jeremiah. He sent all of these prophets to tell the people, look, I am not happy with you. You have left the religion that I've given you and you've started dealing with pagan religions. You have started dealing with all of these different gods. You have started uh, finding religions that allow you, gods that allow you to do what you want to do in the flesh. 
In other words, if you like phonification, the pagan gods had a god that would cover you in phonification. If you like prostitution, the pagan gods had a god that would cover your sins in prostitution. Who wouldn't want to serve gods that would cover everything that they did in the flesh? But God saying, come back to me. He kept sending prophets and he kept warning them, if you don't come back, I'm going to destroy you. I'm going to put you in captivity. And he did that to the northern kingdom and he did it to the southern kingdom. God is calling out to us. Do you know what time it is? God is calling. And yet we have churches and church leaders who have not heard the call of God. You know how I know they have not heard the call of God? Because they still have the showtime religion. These uh, showtime religion is not like old time religion because showtime religion is about messing with folk emotions. You don't come and just sing a song. You come and take the song out to the river, bring it back, take it to the, the, the tallest building. And bring. You got, you got to put too much flesh in the song. Why not sing the song from the spirit of God and stop? flesh from interfering. If you preach and nobody running around the church, you keep preaching until somebody run. That cannot be the essence anymore of what we are all about because God is calling for a change, my brothers and sisters. We got to change the messages that we are sending out to the people. Just for example, are the messages that you are preaching are messengers that are going to get people through this pandemic plus another pandemic plus all the things that are coming upon this world. Here's a question. What if the church has to go through the tribulation period? Let's look at what the scripture says. In 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, verse number 50, it says this. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither does corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment and in the twinkling of the eye, at the last, and we shall be changed. Now, when you look at the tribulation period, you're going to see that there are seven vows, there are seven bowls, and there are seven trumpets. All of these are uh, instruments where God uses, God pours out his wrath upon the earth during the tribulation period. We don't want to be there, right? But this is what God is going to, and then there's seven thunders. They were so bad that when John said I was about to write them, the angels said, no, don't write those. Don't write them at all. So those are some other things that's going to come upon this earth that we don't even know about. But the seven trumpets, the last trump of God, like the rapture, we're going to be raptured on the last trump. The last trump of God is when God comes back for the church. And it's when he set up the battle of Armageddon. That's, that, that's what the Bible is saying here. If we leave on the last trump, we leave when God is coming back. We're going to be caught up with him. And the dead in Christ is going to rise. And we all going to go to that last battle of Armageddon. That's a belief that I'm more entitled to believe in now as I study scripture. Look at this scripture here. In 2 Thessalonians uh, 2, verses 1 through 4. It says, Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by the gathering together unto him, the rapture, that ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word, 
nor by letter as from us as that the day of Christ, the rapture, is at hand. For some were saying the rapture had already come. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, a great rebellion in the church, and that the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. He doesn't come on the scene until the, the second three and a half years of the tribulation period. So if he's not coming back before then, then we can't be pre-tribulationists. -tribula uh, we have to be either mid or post. Nevertheless, we are going to be suffering something here on this earth. We're going to have to go through something. Remember the first Christians, the early Christians, they were persecuted. They were sent to the lion's den. They were beheaded. They were all of that. Christians always had to suffer for this thing and their belief of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We have gotten so soft. We are so cushioned. We got it so good. We think we're going to live it good and then get in the rapture and go before anything comes on this earth. That may be true. And I'm hoping that that's true because I would love to go out that way. But suppose it's not. Do you have what it takes to go through the tribulation when they come to you and say, if you don't take this mark, you can't buy or sell. Man, that's going to kill a third of us right then cannot be able to buy, that means you can't buy food. You can't sell to make no money. All the money in your bank is taken. You can't eat. You can't live without somebody to sell you things that are necessary for you to eat, to live, for shelter, for transportation. And then it comes to a point that says, if you don't take this mark, we're going to behead you. Many saints are going to be beheaded because of the testimony that they have of Christ and because their refusal to take the mark of the beast. Can you resist that? When you can't even handle a church member saying something bad about you, a church member not speaking to you, my brothers and sisters, we have to reprogram. We have to reprogram. We got to change our paradigm. We got to get ready for what's coming upon this earth. And I tell my preacher brothers, and, and I say it all the time, we got to quit preaching this materialism, how to get from God. We got to keep Stop preaching what God can do for us. And we got to begin to get our minds geared to the fact that we got to go through something, you all, that these times that are coming is just a prelude to what possibly God is placing on this earth. And we, the children of God, got to be the light of God. We got to lead this charge. But can you do it? Are you prepared to do it? And I tell you another thing. You ain't got the Holy Ghost. You can go and on take the mark right now. Because the Bible says, when the Holy Ghost shall come, you shall receive power. That's Jesus in you and you in him. The power of God to give you power to do like the old Christians did. To look in the face of death and love Christ more than you love life. Man, you got to be ready. And I'm saying we are not ready because we're used to these soft messages. How to get from God. Materialism. Satan got us looking more for a blessing coming than the second coming. He got, he has made this church a financial institution where the man of God is teaching the people of God how to get more from God, except instead of how to get saved by God and how to maintain that salvation. What time is it, you all? It's time out for looking for the hand of God to give you more things 
instead of looking for the face of God that will burn out things and burn up you and burn up the things that pull you back from going forth as soldiers, triumphant soldiers in this last and evil day. You see, the thing about seeking the face of God, the Bible say that no man can look at Jesus' face and live. Therefore, in the spirit, as we begin to seek God in the morning and seek him at noonday and seek him at night, more of us die off. Jesus is burning it up and we're becoming more and more like him. You can't jump off the wagon and begin to give and to sacrifice. Man, you have to, you have to ride on the wagon a while. You have to make it a lifestyle, a life commitment to give yourself, to look in the eyes of God and to die daily. And when God begins to smell flesh, oh my God, I wish I, I feel the spirit myself. When God begins to smell flesh, he begins to entrust you more into that inner circle, the circle where you're going to be protected from pandemics, protected from the devil and his tricks, protected from the gates of hell. When you die, and that's what you got to do, in your dash, my brothers and sisters, you're spending too much time with finding out how to live. And God is trying to teach us how to die to us and to live unto him. Therefore, all of us should be finding a place to tell people about that place that God has prepared for us. And then we should be finding people to tell them that, look, man, time is short. The Bible only gives us 7 to 80 years. Man, it's the man that's turning 72 in October. I'm going to tell you, man, that's not a long time. But that's all the time that you have to get it right. Do you know what time it is, my brothers and sisters? It's high time to stop looking at how much you can get. Stop looking at your bank account because you can't take none of that with you. I've been to many funerals, my brothers and sisters. I have yet to see a hearse, behind, a, 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 a U-Haul behind a hearse. Glory be to God. With all of your possessions and all of your belongings with going to the burial ground. Man, your, your, your sons, your daughters, your friends, people are going to be wearing your shoes, driving your car, living in your home, spending your money because you can't take none of that with you. The only thing you're going to be able to take is your soul. And the only thing God is going to be interested in is what did you do with the life that he gave you? What did you do with your dash? You know, the Bible says this. He says in Matthew, the sixth chapter, he says that, uh, he talked about the birds, how they sow not, yes, to let the Lord take care of them. And then he talks about the lilies of the field, how they are arrayed in such a beauty that even Solomon in all of his glory couldn't even compare. He also talked about, he said, don't be worried about food and clothes and all of these things. He said, that's what the heathens do. But the children of God, we ain't into this material stuff. Preachers, quit preaching it. Quit preaching how I can get more. Keep Quit preaching how I can get God to do more. Start preaching of how I can do more for the God who have done everything. And he says, he said, look, he said, what I want you to do. He said, I want you to seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And he said, all of these things that we desire will not be subtracted, will not be divided, but he said will be added unto us. You see, we got the cart before the horse. God is saying, put it in the right order, particularly in times like this. When you begin to take care of my business, God is saying, he said, definitely, certainly, I will take care of yours. So next week, we're going to start part two. Of Do you know what time it is? 
talking about seeking ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Until then, my brothers and sisters, I want you all to rest and be safe and to know that when you do it God's way, it doesn't matter what comes your way, God has your back. Precious Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, there is no God like you. I, I don't like what's coming on the earth, Lord, but you said that it had to come first before you return. All I know, God, that you are soon to return. And God, I want to look into your face. I want to walk the streets of glory. I want to just tell you, Lord, how I appreciate you bringing me through. I want to spend eternity with you, Lord, with no more tears, no more crying, no more pain. God, is no place that I want to be other than what you, with you. So God, I pray, God, this desire unto the listeners and God, that you will bless them and they're going and they're coming and have them to take another look, particularly, Lord, of what they call your plan of salvation. Let them not be tricked, God but let them see clearly that they may walk into the gates of heaven and give your name the glory for that trip. In Jesus' name we pray. See you next week, Friday at 12. God bless you.